Okay, a lot of new gun owners out there. This is uh, being made during Corona times. Uh, but during my days in uh, California, when I lived in Los Angeles, being a gun guy in Los Angeles, so you're a bit of a black sheep. And uh, I would have friends who would hit me up and they're like, hey, can you help me go buy my first gun? And as a proud papa, I would say, of course. L little yunker, is that, is that what you call them? Like little kids, little yunkers? I don't know, I don't have kids. So whatever, little shitbag kids, right? So like, come on, little shitbag kid, let's go buy you a new gun, right? So I go to the gun store with them and what I would always tell them is, hey, look, there's some essential newbie gun gear that you're gonna need in addition to just getting your pistol. Um, now we're not gonna go down the rabbit hole should your first gun purchase be a pistol or a rifle. I'll just say my opinion would strongly be that it should be a pistol. Um, we'll save that for a different day. But I would always tell them, look, there's a, a basic minimum amount of shit that you're gonna need to have in order to have your essentials covered, okay? And that's what this video is, is going through your essentials list. Because when you see the price tag on a Glock and it's like, I don't know, whatever, 500 bucks, let's say, you go, cool, I can go get into gun ownership for 500 bucks. Eh, I would plan on closer to a couple of grand and here's why. So first things first, let's just say you're buying a pistol. I would typically have advised someone back in the day, hey, look, let's get you a Glock 19 for your first gun. I had a lot of reasons. Again, we won't go through in this. This is more about the accessories and gears that you would want to gears, not a word, unless it's a vehicle. Accessories and gear that you would want to have with this. So let's say you bought yourself a Glock 19. What do you need to have with that? Okay, so first things first, you're gonna need some magazines for your gun, okay? Uh, these are magazines, these are not clips, okay? Again, videos for different days, but if you wanna look really dumb talking to your friends who own guns, call these clips. They're not, they're magazines, okay? So you're gonna want two separate sets of magazines. You're gonna want range mags, which would be like what we're out here doing today, where they hit the dirt and you just don't give a shit, or they hit the floor or indoor range or whatever it is. These are your training mags. You're willing to have them get dirty and wrecked and it's all good, okay? I would recommend, look, have three training max. Uh, if you buy a Glock or something like that, chances are your gun came with two, maybe three. I'd recommend, look, have three training mags. These are all training mags for me. Um, these are very easy to tell because they have extensions on them that actually give me an extra about th three grounds, if I remember right, with these. So mark them. You could put a little, uh, you know, uh, Sharpie right on a training mag one, training mag two, put a little red paint, something like that on there, but be able to identify which ones are your training mags. I would have three of those. And which ones are your, uh, let's just say like your carry mags or your home defense mags, something like that. So basically these are mags that you're not gonna be throwing into the dirt or getting in the rain, things like that. They are oriented for, these are my mags for shit went bump in the night, okay? They are, if, I'm, if I have a CCW and I'm actually carrying my firearm, these are the mags that would be on me. Uh, or if this is my bedside gun, they are the mags that would be on my bedside table or whatever you have. Um, so don't interact, interact, don't, don't, don't like have these mags be doing like dual purpose, you know, like training mags are for training, home defense, carry mags, those are for not getting beat up. So you're going to want, I would say as a bare minimum, six mags. Uh, next thing you are going to want, um, and this is not so much a gear thing, but you're going to want a budget for training. Okay. If you want to make this very, very simple, set aside 500 bucks for training. We can go down the deep rabbit hole of training and how critical it is. You've got to take my word for it, that this is not the solution to all your problems. This can get you in more problems if you're not trained on how to use it. You need to set aside a training budget. I would set aside 500 bucks. You need to do a, really, I would say a two-day pistol course, right? You're gonna need to be in a couple of days worth of pistol training. Your primary goals within that is not to become John Wick. Stop forget about it. The purpose of these classes is not tactics. It is face safe firearms handling and the fundamentals of marksmanship. You need to be able to safely operate this and have a decent shot at actually hitting something. That is my concern with you as a new gun owner. Be able to safely handle the firearm and successfully shoot and hit a target. Okay, 500 bucks, about 250 a day should be, get you through a little training budget. Next thing is ammo. 
You need two separate stashes of ammo. You are going to need training ammunition. Training ammunition can, generally speaking, be total dog shit, okay? A lot of people will use reloaded ammunition, which is basically brass that has been reused a few different times. I don't like reloaded ammunition. I like factory or new ammunition. This is Magtech. This is not, I literally grabbed the closest thing that was in my little gun room and brought it out. This is just shit range ammunition. There's no sponsorship, nothing like some Fiocchi or Winchester or whatever it is. Just go get some cheap ammunition, but you're going to want a thousand rounds of that. I know you watch enough news to think that a thousand rounds means that you're on some sort of terrorist watch list. A thousand rounds is what we in the gun community would call a weekend. Okay. That will get you through your two day pistol course. Get a thousand rounds of ammo. Separate from that, you are going to need, uh, home defense or defensive ammo. Okay. Again, I'm not here to necessarily tell you which to get, but I will tell you this, you are going to need hollow points. I just brought out a couple different things that I will carry. This could either be a gun that is on my person. It could be a bedside gun, something that stays in your vehicle for you. If you have one pistol, it would be all of those things. You're going to need hollow points. The purpose of hollow points versus training ammunition is that they expand when they hit something. So a hollow point will be, have a, stay with me here a hollow point. Fucking wild science shit. This is Jake the science guy. These expand when they hit something. So if it hits flesh, right, it will expand and open up, giving you the intended result, which is you survived. Okay. Uh, this is Corbon DPX. Really, really good stuff. Not cheap. You know, you'll probably spend about a buck or more around on that. That's some federal HST uh, very mainstream with different uh, law enforcement agencies. Depending on where you live, you may or may not be able to get this. For most of America, you won't have a problem getting this. But just know that, you know, a thousand rounds of training ammunition, you're looking at about, you know, 220 bucks ballpark. Uh, I would recommend, hey, you know, get at least 250 to 500 rounds of uh, hollow points and you're going to spend closer to you know, 80 cents, maybe even a buck around for something like that. So just know it's going to be more expensive. So we've got gun, we've got magazines, we've got separate pools of uh, magazines, we've got separate piles of ammunition. Next thing you know, we need some holsters. So there's really two things you're going to want. You're going to want a training holster. This would be something like for the range. Uh, coming out here, going to an indoor range. If you could actually draw from a holster at a range, don't do that unless you know you can do that. Something like this sits on your hip, right? Nothing super, super fancy, right? Again, we're not trying to be John Wick. So you could go something super basic like that. Um, there's a term you will see called OWB, outside the waistband. That's an OWB or outside the waistband holster. Um, nothing fancy. You can pick up all this kind of stuff from, uh, from a company called, uh, Triple Z. It's down uh, in San Diego, I believe, down when I lived in California. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of different companies you could use for that. For a training holster, you may opt for, if you're someone who keeps a light on your gun, if it's like a bedside home defense gun, you probably should have a light on your gun. This is a Surefire X300. Still, I would say most people could agree uh, probably the gold standard for a uh, pistol light. So you may want to have a range holster that can take that pistol light, okay? Just so you can get used to uh, what it's like to shoot with a pistol on your gun and activate it if you're in a low light, no light uh, situation. So you, regardless, you're gonna need a training holster and you're gonna want a IWB or inside the waistband holster. So the purpose of a holster like that is to go basically inside your pants. That way you can actually carry your gun and you can draw your gun from there. Uh, you may or may not carry your gun, but you're going to want the ability to at the very least. So you're going to want some sort of uh, concealment holster, whether it's something like this. This is from a company called G G Code. Um, two of these holsters I've showed you shame on me, are from a company called Guncraft that doesn't exist anymore, but they made phenomenal holsters back in the day. So something where you could actually conceal that gun. Uh, beyond that, you are going to need a magazine pouch, aka something to keep magazines in. Um, now, it's two different ways to do this. You're going to want to have one of these that you could use at the range like this, right? It would just, if I was 
I'm not gonna interfere with my little audio box here, but you know, basically this would go on your belt if this was my belt. That way you can draw that magazine. Um, you're also gonna want to have one that you can carry inside the waistband. So again, clip under your belt, throw it under your shirt if you're operating in a concealed carry capacity. Um, one of these, if depending on where you buy it from, will accomplish both of those purposes, right? Because this, for me, could actually go inside the waistband or I could flip it around and now it's outside the waistband and you can carry a magazine like that. Uh, this is one that was designed purely for inside the waistband, um, right? And you might even consider something if you're like, I don't want too many things in my belt, you could pick up something like this, which is a, a Neo Mag uh, carrier. Uh, should pop up on uh, Google. I'm blanking out off the top of my head on where it's from. I was thinking Raven Concealment, but I could be wrong on that. But a Neo Mag Carrier, and all that does is literally clips into your magazine so that you can throw this in your pocket, and it stays pretty discreet, yet you could still draw that magazine out. So you've got a lot of different options. I will admit this is typically more the direction I go just because it's less bulk on my body, which is important to me as a man who is very bulky. And you can ask anyone and they'll agree with that statement. Um, so really, that's it. If you add all this up, again, you're not just talking about a $500 gun. You're talking closer to a couple of grand. Is this a necessary? No, it's not necessary, but it really is essential if you want to have like just a basic setup that checks all of your boxes, right? We've got gun, mags, different mags for different things, different ammo for different things. We've got some training. We've got a couple different holsters, depending on what I'm doing and the ability to carry magazines. Maybe a light, that couple grand does not factor in a light, which those Surefire X300s, you're looking at about 300, ironically. Um, so again, this is just Jake's little checklist. Um, take it for what you will. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. This is uh, you know a family show. We thank you. Hopefully you and the kids learned something today. Thanks.